Good evening, and this is going to be five minutes or probably more of Frank and Sakria talking about how Kavanaugh is your latest justice, or to put it nicely, how Democrats snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Like and subscribe, or hate and comment. Either way, I'm happy. So how did we get to Justice Kavanaugh getting confirmed when it, well, it was pretty damn likely that he was not going to be confirmed as a justice and might have been heading down the road of impeachment? Well, let's go turn back the clock two weeks ago to two Saturdays ago for an eternity in politics. Well, you had uh, Justice, now Justice Kavanaugh, and Dr. Ford uh, going over when they were going to go in front of the uh, Judiciary Committee. And it looks like everything had been settled. And then, boom, Justice Kavanaugh gets hit with the second accuser. This one saying that he exposed himself and tried to grind his junk on her body. Or maybe not. She couldn't actually figure out whether it was her, whether it was him, or were the dates, or who exactly had did it. But it was a second accuser. And people like me said, maybe it's time to cut the losses and go nominate somebody else. Amy Coney Barrett. Or some other individual who uh, could get through the Senate. And so you had the three days of buildup. And then the day before, Michael Avenatti, famous for being the attorney for Stormy Daniels, comes out and says that Justice Kavanaugh is the grand orchestrator of serial gang rapes and druggings when he was in college multiple times and had a witness who had seen many of these go through. And then eventually he uh, helped prepare her gang rape. Yeah. And, uh, like most people, you know, uh, I don't know if I would go back to those parties if I knew I was had a potential to be gang raped, but apparently this woman was definitely there. And then eventually, well, you know, maybe he spiked the punch. But we don't know. Uh, he, I, I, he was near the punch and then eventually it turned out as some weird thing. Like he threw ice on somebody. I mean, I was in college and I threw water on somebody. I, I, I guess that could be turned into something really, really bad. Uh, but again, I'll never be on the Supreme Court. So, um, but then comes in Thursday, right? And then Dr. Ford gives her testimony and it is incredibly passionate and from the looks of it, accurate. Now, is it 100% accurate? I don't know, but it sounded like she believed what she was saying was true. And we can get into the minutia about how eyewitness testimony is notoriously bad and how people with significantly higher melanin counts go to jail and get exonerated later on through DNA because eyewitness testimony is not always the best. And after 36 years, sometimes you make stories and all that. We can get into that. Or maybe she was telling the truth and just didn't know all of the details, like how she got there and how she left. Happens. 36 years. Kavanaugh does his part. And with all of the news coming in and thinking you're, you know, three minutes from justice. And now you're three minutes from possibly getting impeached. You give this speech and it's partisan and it's attacking and kind of shitty and you get asked questions and you're kind of a dick. And should it be over? And yeah, well, while Senator Graham threw him a lifeline and helped out and sort of turned the tables and maybe helped save the nomination, you get into the next day and Jeff Flake flakes. Or at least that's the perception. And calls for the one-week investigation. What had happened when you look back on it is that sometimes when you're in court, you throw a line out there and hope that the other guy takes it. Because what I've learned from people that, that do uh, criminal cases or, or civil cases, you never ask a question you don't know the answer to. And we knew the answer to the FBI investigation before the FBI investigation ever happened. We knew this because then Senator and... Um, uh, chairman of the Judicial Committee during the Clarence Thomas hearings, Joe Biden, said basically that, and well, if I'm going to paraphrase Joe Biden, they're malarkey when they come to FBI investigations. Or his own words were basically, it's a he said, she said, and you may not like what's there, and it's just a he said, she said. Who cares about an FBI investigation? 
But much like from the OJ trial, when when uh, Johnny Cochran threw out that line to Darden to you know make OJ put on the make OJ put on the glove, put on the glove, put on the glove, right? And Robert Shapiro looked at the glove and went, "Bro, this shit don't fit. It ain't gonna fit OJ. It doesn't fit me." Daryl took that. Rolled it in, and uh, well, last time I checked, OJ's not in jail. Well, I mean, he went to jail for nine years for you know, stealing his stuff back. But he didn't go to jail for killing his ex-wife. So, in this case, Republican senators started to throw that line out there. You want an investigation? You want an invest to bait the Democrats to do it. And then Jeff Flake goes out there and goes, yeah, yeah, I want a one-week investigation. Democrats bought it hook, line, and sinker. They put on the gloves. What happens, right? When you're playing cards and you got a great hand, you get all twitchy, right? The worst thing that can happen is when you have tells, everyone knows what you got, maybe you don't make any more money. The worst thing that can happen is when you have tells and you're not having the best hand. So for them, the minute that they opened up and said, the investigation isn't going far enough, they lost their moral high ground. They lost it from that point on. Because what were they going to find in the FBI investigation, right? They didn't interview Kavanaugh. They didn't interview Dr. Ford. And that kind of makes sense because they did testify for five hours and they were asked pertinent questions. And you can argue, yeah, they could have asked more digging and digging. It's 36-year-old allegations. And you could say, well, they didn't interview everybody. They had a week time fold and they got it done in like three days, right? And they went through the two most pertinent allegations. Not the third one because that one was bullshit. But they went through the two allegations that were the most prominent. And they were like, eh, doesn't seem like there's much there. And yeah, they could have interviewed like 20 more people. But when you interview the 10, and again, I haven't seen the report. Nobody's seen the report except for the 100 senators. When they asked the 10, and they're like, yeah, there wasn't much here. That's where it was. But it was hook, line, singer. If the Democrats would have shut up, just let the investigation happen, then they could have attacked it and said, well, you didn't go far enough. You didn't look at the alcohol. You didn't look at, uh, you didn't interview all the people. The fact that they rolled that out there and the first thing they said was, well, it's not going far enough and this is the White House stormwalling and you have President uh, Trump going, yo, I told them they could do whatever they want and by the way, I kind of believe Ford. They kind of lost their moral high ground because what that did was it was like, Ooh, the glove's not fitting right. I thought he was going to blow up. And eventually, you know, Donald Trump does blow up because that's Donald Trump. But the moral high ground was lost. The glove didn't fit right. So then they go through their thing. They come, the FBI does its thing. And it's like, yep, it's a he said, she said. And yeah, they don't have any corroborating evidence. And then it just, where are you going to find him? Maybe drinks too much? Yeah, because that's a fair interpretation. I can put five people in a room and ask them how much is too much to drink. And it can go from the Donald Trump standard, who's, I guess, never had a sip of alcohol. Who might say a sip is too much alcohol. You go to somebody like me and it's like, I don't know, too drunk to drive. You go to somebody else and you'd be like, well, if you ain't blacked out, you ain't drunk. And then go everywhere in the middle and you ask, what are you going to ask if he's too drunk? Are you going to remember, you know, every time, man, that was drunk out. I've been blacked out one time in my life. I've blacked out one time. You can have somebody say, oh, Frank must have blacked out more than that. I saw him drink in college. I blacked out one time in college. Once. I can't be, I can't be a senator. Well, I guess I could be a senator, but I can't be a Supreme Court justice because I blacked out one time. And I can admit to people I blacked out one time. But not everybody is blacked out one time. Many people blacked out more than that. And some people have never blacked out. Some people have been drunk and been like, I've got to take a nap. I've been that a few times. And maybe that's Kavanaugh's level. But were you going to waste an entire investigation on that? Probably not. And because Democrats took the moral high ground and then lost it, you got to have Susan Collins, who, as a friend of mine says, always finds a way to disappoint, not my words, his, for any liberal cause when it comes to putting somebody on the Supreme Court and basically said, in a 45-minute speech, yeah, this is not how we should be doing this. But I'm going to, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not going to condemn somebody on an accusation. This is unfounded. And so in a two-week span, Democrats went from probably being able to hold that nomination until they actually take control of the Senate to now having, well, North Dakota is probably going to go Republican. 
We don't know about Florida yet. Arizona may flip to the Democrats. But there's a pretty good chance that Republicans are still going to have a majority of the Senate. Maybe it gets one seat bigger. Maybe it gets one seat smaller. But if another vacancy happens, more than likely two, now you're going to have 50-50 vote. Because it doesn't matter who we put up there. Democrats are going to try to use scorched earth again. And, well, didn't work. And I'm a big fan of using what if and shoulda, couldas, but the minute that uh, Diane Feinstein took her sweet ass time to reveal that somebody potentially who was becoming a justice had raped somebody and took six weeks to, to do anything about it, that would happen six weeks before in closed session. Yeah, it wouldn't have got out of committee. Kavanaugh doesn't get out of committee. Jeff Flake would vote against it. Because remember, Jeff Flake is running for president. And he can easily say, you know, there's bad moral character in here. I'm going to let him go. But, you know, you lost the moral high ground because you waited six weeks and it made it look all political. And so, when, again, it was never about truth. It was about politics. You had a great hand, but you went like this over too quick. We got to see it and, you know what, Justice Kavanaugh on the court. So, like and subscribe if you want. And if you survived the 12-minute video, congratulations.